we now turn to a set of hypothetical data for uh, depth versus clock time. Remember this data should be quadratic and uh, actually I've just used perfect squares here for the depth so we know darn well that's going to be quadratic. We just have uh, a stretch of a, well let's not worry what the function is right now. So we have uh, this clock time, depth versus clock time information. And recall that what we do if we want to find the rate of change of the depth is we find our midpoint clock times which will be 5, 15, 25, 35 seconds and so forth. And for each midpoint clock time we find the average rate on the corresponding interval. And these rates are easily found uh, between uh, clock time 0 and 10 we have a 10 second time interval where the depth changes by negative 19 centimeters. That gives us a rate of depth change of negative 1.9 centimeters per second. And then we get negative 1.7, negative 1.5, negative 1.3 centimeters per second. And this is a basic property of a quadratic function. If this is perfectly quadratic data on uniform time intervals, then the average rate will always change by the same amount. Now what we've got here are approximate values of the clock time t and the rate of change or derivative function f prime of t. So clock time 5, the derivative should be approximately negative 1.9. At 15, it should be negative 1.7, and so forth. Now what we want to do is we want to get a handle on another quantity, which is the rate at which the rate changes. See, we have a rate of change, f prime of t. We want to see the rate at which f prime of t changes over each of the four intervals that we have here. That's actually going to be fairly simple. We can probably see pretty clearly that since the average rate changes by the same amount over each time interval, that the rate at which that rate is changing is going to be constant. But let's go ahead and do the calculation. To find the rate at which this rate changes, we take the change in the f prime values. Remember, this column gives us f prime values. So we take the change in f prime, which is the change in the rate, or the change in the number of centimeters per second at which the uh, surface of the water seems to be moving. And we find that those changes, well, from negative 1.9 centimeters per second to negative 1.7, is an increase of 0.2 centimeters per second. And then similarly, we have the same increases over the next two time intervals. Now, to find the rate at which the rate is changing, we're going to take the change of the rate and divide it by the change in clock time. Because, of course, to find any rate, we take the change in the quantity whose rate we're trying to find and divide it by the difference in clock time. Since the quantity whose rate we're trying to find is the average rate itself, then we're going to take the differences of the average rate and divide by the delta t's. Well, the delta t's are clearly 10 centimeters per second on every interval. So that when we divide our delta f primes by delta t, we get 0 0.02 centimeters per second per second. Because remember, we're dividing centimeters per second by seconds. We're going to get centimeters per second over seconds. That unit, incidentally, simplifies to centimeters over seconds squared. But we're not going to worry too much about that. And we see that this is the rate at which the rate changes. Because we're taking the change in a rate and dividing by the clock time, we're getting a rate at which the rate f prime changes. 